me you were dramatic for no reason. Stupid. Hey guys, it's V and welcome back to my channel. Let's just get into tonight's episode because a lot happened. I'm pissed. Isaiah and Maddie, they're both on dates with the siblings. Thanks to America. Let's discuss the action that was happening in the villa before we discuss the dates. Okay, so let's talk about the villa first. Sydney, she's still crying up a storm, suffering due to the consequences of her actions. She's nervous because Isaiah's on a date with the new girl, and the new girl's gorgeous and assertive. She's scared they're gonna form a connection. But hold up, as soon as Isaiah returns to the villa, she's gonna tell Isaiah her feelings, let him know how much she likes him. Moving on to Zita and Timmy. I just love when she gets camera time. After he did all that shit talking behind her back, they're having a chat. He's doing the same thing that he always does. He's sweet talking her, letting her know how much he likes her. He told her he's happy with her. He's lucky that he got her so early in the process. Isn't it crazy how to her face he's saying all this? But earlier in the day, he was just talking shit about, oh, how he can't see her outside the villa and she's moving too fast, this is and that. He's so fake. He lets her know that he wants to focus on what's going on like day by day, he just wants to take things slow. Zita's saying the same thing, like, yeah, we're gonna take it day by day. And that's what I was saying, but I didn't edit the video, but that's what I was saying last night. He was jumping to conclusions. Like the girl was just asking what's gonna happen outside the villa. Cause the purpose of the show is to meet someone and to make it work, right? You're there for six weeks. Can we, can we see ourselves working outside of here? Timmy's always saying sweet things, always expressing how much he likes her, how much he admires her, all this stuff. So of course the natural question is, okay, do you see us working outside of here? That's it. But he took that and started going crazy and overreacting, making it something that it wasn't. She wasn't asking for your hand in marriage. She was just saying, okay, you like me so much, can you see us working outside of here? But no, he wanted to be a drama queen and jump to conclusions. Timmy, you were dramatic for no reason. Stupid. Zita brought up the new girl. She mentioned that the new girl is Timmy's type. Timmy said that he wants Zita and he's confident in what they have. We'll talk. Now we have to move on to Serenity and Zita's chat. So Zita and Serenity are talking about the new girl, Bria. She mentions that Timmy said he found the new girl, Bria, attractive. And Zita, that girl went on go. She started calling Timmy out. She called Timmy a joker. And she accused Timmy of running game on her. I don't like Timmy, but in his defense, he did say to Zita's face, he found the new girl attractive. Maybe that went over her head. She knew that Bria was his type. Since she didn't hear it from his mouth, like calling her attractive, she felt like he admitted the truth. She got upset and she reacted. Okay, now let's focus on the dates. We're gonna start off with Isaiah and Bria. They looked good together. I don't think Isaiah's Bria's type. I don't think a lot of them are each other's types in the villa, but they just have to make what's their work. Their eye contact was intense. Maddie and Chaz, they were sweet and adorable. It was like super monotone, like whispers, boring, vanilla, like watching paint dry. But let's get to the real tea. Chaz brought up the question of why do you think America chose you two on dates? Of course they assumed, oh, it's because they saw that we were having such a rough time in here. Chaz mentioned, do you think it had anything to do with that kiss before recoupling? <laughs> I see why they brought the siblings now. Chaz, you knew what you were doing, and I appreciate you for that. I didn't want Andy and Sydney to get away with that, so I'm happy Chaz brought that up. The foursome is back in the villa, back from their date. <laughs> Isaiah is heated, he goes storming off. Maddie, she lets Sydney know, Chaz, he snitched on you. Isaiah knows you and Andy kissed before a couple in. Isaiah! Isaiah calls Andy for a chat. RIP Andy. It's been nice knowing you. <laughs> Yo, Isaiah brought the real housewives energy. You know when you want someone to just 
tell the truth. So you keep asking the question, you want them to snitch on themselves. That was the approach that Isaiah took. He just kept touching his sneakers. I feel like he was fidgeting to keep himself from actually hitting Andy. So he had to touch his sneakers. He had to move around. He couldn't sit still. He punched his hand at one point in the conversation. I thought he was gonna swing on Andy. But if he swung on Andy, it would have done nothing because it's like Andy's a pocket square. Like what do you get out of swinging on Andy? But anyway, he just kept asking Andy, do you have something to tell me? Do you have something to tell me? Andy's all stuttering like, Andy was so scared. <laughs> Andy's like, uh, that we kissed? Um, Isaiah wants to know why Andy didn't tell him. He feels disrespected. I gotta watch it again because this scene was so good. <laughs> Bro calls destroy. Not only did Andy do him dirty with the whole pick, he did him dirty with the kiss. Yo, Andy was so scared, yo. Andy and Isaiah, they're broken up. They're done. Their friendship is over. <laughs> Can we talk about the ladies, how toxic the ladies are? They were all excited and turned on on the way Isaiah pressed Andy. Like, they want Amanda to have that kind of energy for them. Guess I'm toxic too because I agree. Isaiah want points with me. I like that. After putting Andy in his place, Isaiah called Sydney up. The same approach Isaiah had with Andy, he had the same approach with Sydney. He asked Sydney, do you have something to tell me? Sydney's like, uh, Andy and I kissed. She mentioned, well, you and Maddie also kissed and I didn't get upset. Valid point, valid point. If anything, this whole thing exhibits how much Isaiah likes Sydney. I know it sounds crazy, but it just shows how much Isaiah likes Sydney because he was so upset off of a kiss. A trash one at that. Andy was voted the worst kisser in the villa. Like, you have nothing to worry about, Isaiah. Isaiah just let Sydney know, like, I feel disrespected, especially by this dumbass. Like, you want this cookie cutter guy? Him? This square? Sydney's like, no, I don't want him. I want you. Like, I tried to make myself like him, but you know, it's you. Yo, like I said, I knew somebody was gonna get hurt. It was Andy. Andy blew up his whole entire experience just off of curiosity. Of course, he was intrigued. The fact that Andy was sweating Sydney, I think Sydney liked that. Damn, I felt bad for Andy. Curiosity killed the cat, and the grass ain't always greener. You gotta learn the lesson the hard way. What can I tell you? Welcome to Love Island. At least he learned that he can take risk. And not every risk comes with reward. Sydney and Isaiah take toxic to another level. I'm thinking, okay, this might be the end of them. He's super mad. Sydney, she's focused on getting this man back. She lets him know, I miss cuddling you. I miss you. I think about you all the time. Isaiah leans back. Sydney's like, can I touch your hair? She starts playing with his hair. I'm like, oh my God, they are so fucking toxic. These two are crazy. These are the youngins. The reason why I can sit back, chuckle, and laugh is because like we've all been there before. And like I've said, they're 21 and 22. What do you expect from them? They're babies. They just started drinking. Just sit back and enjoy this roller coaster. Who's next? Okay, let's go back to Zita and Timmy. Sydney stresses me out. She's a lot. Okay, now back to my favorite girl, Zita. She ended up apologizing to Timmy. If roles were reversed, we would be getting in Timmy's ass. So I do respect her for apologizing to Timmy. But, I don't care, I'm happy she got crazy with him. He's a newer guy. He needs to be afraid of her. So I do respect her for apologizing, and it was the right thing to do. She, she reacted, we all react. It's fine, they're good, they're okay. For now, let's move on to Serenity. Serenity had an emotional breakdown. She was crying. She feels like Tyler doesn't show her that he really likes her. Like his actions don't match up. Like she's the one that's always initiating the touch, always initiating the kiss. Like, I feel two ways about this. Not everyone has the same love language. It's easy for people to say, oh, Tyler doesn't like her, Tyler doesn't like her. 
I am that way too. I am hardcore. I am not Miss Lovey Dovey. I don't initiate a kiss. I don't initiate hand holding. I don't initiate touch. I'm not like that at all. When I see people that are people like that, I get it. I'm not like that. I will be in love with someone and you probably couldn't even tell. Not everyone shows love, emotions, feelings, and just things in the same way. And I wish people would understand that. Not everyone is the same way as you. You can be overly emotional. You can be o a touchy person. Where's the bathroom? I'm not that. I can't, I can't always give you what you need. That's why it's called compromise. You guys are still getting to know each other. Obviously, Serenity is a lovey-dovey person. She said that. If he's not like that, you have to give a person time to get there. You can't go from this to all over you in one night. It takes time. She did pull Tyler for a chat and let him know how she was feeling. She wants him to be more assertive. She feels like she's the only one initiating the touching, the kissing. He did say he's going to work on that. <sighs> this right here is something that I thought was going to happen, but didn't know was going to happen. Maddie. Talk about stepping up. Talking about putting herself out there. Maddie pulled Tyler for a chat to let Tyler know I'm interested. Tyler's also interested. This is the thing about Serenity. I need my girl to work on her poker face. Like I said before, she always lets you know she's bothered. When Maddie called Tyler for a chat, she said a slick comment. When Maddie and Tyler finished their chat, she had like a little stare. She asked Tyler, oh, um, so how was that chat? How was that chat? She needs to learn how to take a step back and play it cool. She wears her emotions on her sleeve, which I respect and I do admire. Because I love honesty and clear communication. But in the same breath, she got to take a step back sometimes. Like, you can't wear all your emotions on your face. Like, you knew what you signed up for. Just play it cool and what's meant to be will be. Now let's talk about T and Tamara, a.k.a. Bria and Chaz. The twins get a text letting them know that at the end of the night, they will be stealing someone's partner to recouple up with. Chaz will be choosing a partner for his sister. Bria will be choosing a partner for her brother. Once they get that text message, they start that whole interview process and the whole chat to getting to know everyone. First you snitch about the kiss. Now y'all finna still people's partners. T and Tamara are just in the villa fucking shit up. Let's start off with Chaz. Chaz had a conversation with Deb. Wants to know if she's interested, blah, blah, blah. She lets him know, I'm happy where I'm at. I'm happy with Jesse. Deb is gonna regret putting all her eggs in Jesse's basket. He had a talk with Serenity. Now this is why I don't like the fact that they get to watch the episode before entering the villa. They get to know what's going on. They get to see who's vulnerable. They know who to press upon. And I felt that energy from Chaz when he was talking to Serenity. He mentioned how she was having a difficult time in the villa. Listen, y'all love saying people have a difficult time in the villa. If someone's not there for them, someone's not there for them. Timmy and Zeta was madly in love. Isaiah and Sydney at that time were madly in love. Her and Felipe established they were just friends. Andy was whack. Jesse was head over heels for Deb. There was no one at the time for her to have. That does not make her any less than. So I want to kill that narrative. Chaz talking with Serenity, I did not feel any sincere vibes. I'm sorry. I felt, oh, I'm going to latch on to her because I can stay here longer. Vibes. That's what I got from him. Let's focus on Bria now. So Bria had a chat with Jesse. Dull. Jesse's so dull. She mentioned that she was looking for honesty and trust in a relationship. Right away, I knew she was talking to the wrong guy. Her chat with Timmy. She says she likes Timmy. He's humble, but he brings that big dick energy. Bria, that's just a New Yorker thing. I bring big dick energy. If I come around you and have a conversation with you, you would probably want me too. I'm trying to break my girl Zita's heart. Ooh, I'm sending him Oh, If they stay coupled up, I'm sending them packing. Expeditiously. No first class flight. Middle seats. Spirit Airline. Frontier Airlines, they gotta go. I didn't feel anything during Bria and Timmy's conversation. He's attracted to her. That's it. Everything that he mentioned was like surface level. It was like robot talking to robot. He'll be running back. He's gonna go back. Z 
Zita's the full package personality. Not even, I'm not even gonna talk about her looks because she's gorgeous. But personality wise, she runs that villa. If she wasn't in that villa, it would be dull. Finally, Andy and Sydney had a chat. Oh. They both came to the conclusion that they're not gonna work. And unless Maddie plans on getting back with Andy, Andy's going home. He can fly first class. He endured a lot during this whole week. But they're done. They're cool. Sydney apologized. She did mention it takes two to tango. I'm happy she's starting to take accountability. The youngins are officially back together. Sydney and Isaiah, they solidified themselves. They're back. Social media, like, hates them, but <laughs> I like them. They're giving me abs. We got two throuples down. I love how fast these throuples just end. Not like season three. So we got two throuples down. A lot more to go. After the siblings do their interviews, they switch places. Bria starts interviewing the girls. Chai starts interviewing the guys. Drama, 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 drama. The episode ended with everyone surrounded by the fire pit. Sydney gets a text and informs the Islanders of what's going on, how they are gonna be picked to couple up with someone new. Sibling's choice for the other sibling. Bria said she chose this girl for Chaz because sisters know best. She knows what Chaz needs. This girl knows what she wants. She respects this girl. Chaz is capable of giving this girl what she's looking for. She chose Serenity for Chaz. Her speech was so sweet. I was like, oh, that was so nice. Serenity is 27, 28. Chaz is 21. Like, he can't give her what she needs. Chaz. He said he wants this guy to couple up with his sister. He feels their relationship can blossom. This guy knows how to treat a woman right. His sister deserves to be treated well. He chose Timmy. As soon as Chad said Timmy's name, oh, Zita went off. She said, go kick rocks. <laughs> Timmy tried to kiss her and she, she moved her head away. Tyler and Zita vulnerable, they're singles. They receive a text message that only one of them are going to be staying in the island. The other one is going to be going home. And it's up to their fellow islanders to choose. Like, who the fuck came up with that? How the hell do these two newbies come walking off the street, strolling into their house, and now these people that have been living here got to go? The fact that Z is in this position of no control, I don't like that. And y'all not going to even let America have first powers and first dibs on what's going to happen and what's going on? Y'all made me pay $10 and I can't even have a decision on who gets kicked out first. All I know is Zeta's ass better be there. I'm nervous. Last season they proved they did not know what they were doing. I don't know season four like that. I don't know these folks like that. They have been making dumb decision after dumb decision after dumb decision. And it's only been what? This is our second week, right? The fact that Zeta's in this position and it's up to them. I don't like that. Because all of them are like the B squad to me compared to Zeta. I just want Zita to be okay. Oh my God, I just want Zita to be okay. If she goes, I go. I don't see her leaving. She's like the glue. She's the matriarch of that villa. All right, you guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good night.